Hello everybody, this is Jenny the Artsy Rose, who's ready to read a special short story. Oh wait. I'm back! Uh, my phone is completely empty of videos, so I need to fill up because it is hungry. <laughs> How about a special sweet story, like I promised? Nifelham's Strangest Night, Special Sweet Story Philip and I had finally escaped the world of Love Caprica. We saw the king and Orlando off as they made their way to the parade. And just when I thought about what to do next, I'm gonna go to the library right now. Right now? Yeah, but it's so late already. Yeah, but I'm really in the mood to write a story right now. I feel like I'm overflowing with words, and they're just going to spill right out. Well, so many things happened when we were swallowed up by Love Caprica, right? I think that's what inspired me to write. You're right. Our experience was definitely full of drama. So before this passionate motivation cools off, I want to go to the library and get a manuscript started. Fine. Let's go to the library then. But won't I be on the way while you write? To the contrary, it will be much better if you're there, Jandy. I was stuck in the house in the west, so I have no idea what happened in the east. It would be great if you could fill in the blanks for me. The eastern house. So many crazy things happened there. I want to hear all about it. Philip's eyes glimmered as his curiosity as a writer began to show itself. I wonder if I'll be of any help. The library was much more quiet at night, making it extremely unsettling. When Philip reached his desk, he began writing down everything. He began writing something down in his notebook. First. We woke up in that forest, and there was a red string attached to both of our ankles. It could be said that the two of us were bound by the red string of fate. But it was hard to walk, so we took it off. And I thought to myself that it was a real pity. But that's because you were romantic. But it's not like I'd, I'd gotten left behind by you either. Even novelists daydream sometimes, you know. Philip took my hand, and I held his hand gently with both of mine. There are some times when I think to myself that it must be a dream to have you here with me. Oh dear, does that mean that I have to wake this prince char this charming prince up? One thousand years. When you still hadn't come to Nifelheim, I spent an eternity dreaming about you. Philip smiled a bit sadly. In my dreams, you were always smiling. You called my name so happily. I saw the same dream over and over again. I even began to notice that I was dreaming while I was in the dream itself. I always prayed that the dream would last just a little bit longer. But then I'd wake up and realize you weren't there. I felt so helpless. Philip, don't talk about such sad things. You're gonna make me cry. You're already crying. The quiet tears that were falling from my eyes were wiped by Philip's tongue. I could feel his warmth on my skin. And with that, my body began to tremble. I were kind by his type, by a type of sweet tingling. No, this is wrong. We're in a library. I can't feel like this. We should continue the story. I tried to get Philip to get back to writing as calmly as I could, but the voice that came out of my mouth sounded a bit too sentimental without meaning to. That's right, we were just in the middle of remembering what had happened to write him and left Caprica. Philip moved his hand away reluctantly. Um, where did we leave off? We had woken up in a forest and had just taken off the red string that was tied to our ankles. Oh yeah. We left the forest and headed towards the town, where we ran into Bones. He gave us a lot of information about that world. 
gonna turn his eyes on her side, isn't he? Yeah, he was even great as my butler. And when we were talking to Buzz, Victor found us. That part gave me the chills. You went back to your room. You went back to your home in the east because you thought Sunny was in trouble. And then they wouldn't let me see. They wouldn't let me in. But Sunny was skipping around the house in the east like nothing had happened. I thought as much. Philip smiled bitterly. But it looked like Bones had also noticed that Victor was just lying. If you both knew that, then you should have told me sooner! But there was a chance that he wasn't lying too. And you were really worried about her. So I, I wanted you to feel some sense of relief. I always thought of your feelings first, you know. Philip, you only think about others, don't you? Is that right? It would be good if you just did what you wanted once in a while, too, you know? When I said that, Philip opened his eyes really wide and started laughing to himself. You know, you shouldn't say those kind of things in front of a man. Huh? Because if you do, I really just might do whatever I want with you. Philip's smooth hands brushed my hair away, and he placed his lips on my bare neck, sucking on the nap. Uh -huh. My low moaning echoed throughout the silent library. Philip, stop it! Quit messing around, will you? I felt like my nap was on fire. Seeing that I had turned completely red, Philip laughed half heartedly. And that's not even the beginning of what I want to do to you. You should hold off until we get home after that. So then, it'd be okay as long as we're at home? Uh, well, um... Philip enjoyed seeing me chuck it on my own words. Philip, you're so... I'm so what? Dirty? I wonder if not all, all novelists are like that. We think of everything and anything, you know. I had my crazy delusions too before I got together with Philip, so you never know. But I only want to do all those things with you, Jandy. If that weren't the case, then you'd be in big trouble. The time I spent away from you was way too long, so we have to make up for lost time. I want to touch you countless times to reassure myself that you are the real Jandy. Philip caressed my cheek lovingly. It's alright, Philip. I won't be going anywhere. Good. Well, there's still a lot of the story left to write. Here comes the most crucial part. My house on the east side was bombarded, and I became unable to escape from there. Oh yeah, Bones and I saw all that from the, from the outside too. Bones said that it happened all the time, so it was fine, but I couldn't help but worry about you. And when I tried to stop the zombies from the western house that had come after me, I was completely pulverized. Oh my, did that really? But honestly, I'm glad you weren't there, JD. Why? Because the zombies were dragging me away by my hair. They even tore my clothes to shreds. I'm sure you would not have enjoyed looking at me like that. No way. I don't care how you look, as long as it's you, Philip. Even with my hair all messed up? Yeah. That kind of wild side has its charming points, too. When I answered that, Philip started laughing like he couldn't hold it in anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was being serious! I know. I'm sorry. I'm so happy. Phil kept writing away in his notebook. While I continued to watch his hands write everything down, Philip suddenly tilted his head. What? Oh, it's nothing. I just want to watch you. I love to watch you write. I love to watch you while you write. Your hands are magical. They make words come to life. It's not that big of a deal. Philip said while blushing quite hard. Let's continue with the story. The fierce battle between the two houses continued for hours. And it wasn't until the next day until I was able to see him again. It was a painful experience. Yeah, for me too. 
Ever since we got together, we've been meeting each other as much as we've wanted in the real Mevalon. So being apart for a short period of time is pretty hard. Philip's eyes squinted, as if remembering something painful. But Skeletona told me of a witch who lived nearby, and I asked her to lend, her lend me her powers. And that's when the white butterfly came in. Yes, I turned into a butterfly and flew to your side. Philip got up and started prancing around like a butterfly. Just like this. Philip took my hand. I was so sad that I couldn't turn into a butterfly like you. You, you can become one anytime. You should just close your eyes and wish for it to happen. If you do that, we can become whatever we want. That's ridiculous. It would take special skills to make that happen. Philip twisted me by the arm as we continued to dance as butterflies when... Since when did this place become a playground for adults? Sunny looked at us in amazement while Skeletona t stood next to her. I'm truly sorry, but it's time for the library to close. Oh, it's already time, huh? I guess we couldn't finish the story this time around. It's too bad, but we're just going to have to continue this tomorrow. What? Professor, don't tell me that you're in the midst of writing a new project right now. Well, I still don't know how it's going to turn out. But what kind of story is it going to be? Please tell these old bones at least a little tiny bit. The heroine is a strong and beautiful girl, just like Jandy. Ho oh, ho! This time, my story will be based on true events of my life. Though everything has gone back to normal since then. So that means that we'll get an exclusive view into the professor's private life, right? The truth is even more bizarre than the novel itself. <laughs> Having said that, Philip turned towards me and gave me a wink with a hidden meaning behind it. Well, you two should go home. Actually, there is something I want to check, so you go on ahead and wait for me in the garden, Jandy. Okay. As I waited in the garden, looking at the moon, Philip came out through the entrance of the castle. Sorry for making you wait. It's alright, I was looking at the moon, so I wasn't bored. I wanted to give you this, Jandy. As he said that, Philip held a bookmark made of pressed flowers in the palm of his hand. These flowers have color. In Nivalhong, they only have dried up flowers. The petals were bright red, as if they were a flame. The beauty took my breath away. I could only get one flower from the ones that grow in the royal garden. It's a very rare flower. It only blooms every 100 years or so. Its shape is so beautiful. But how could it have color? That's because I added to it. That's because I added it to it. Philip said that like it was nothing special. Huh? I can do the same things as the king in Orlando, but my way of doing about them is a bit different. Orlando plucked one of the dried flowers blooming in the garden and spoke softly. You humble thing. Have you forgotten what your true shape is like? Remember, I'm sure you were once a truly beautiful lady. The gray flower moved suddenly and subtly. You will grab the attention of anyone that crop comes across you. That will be your future from here on. And as soon as he said that, the dried up flower started acquiring color in the blink of an eye. And just like the pressed flower in the bookmark, this one turned bright red and in full bloom. It's like I'm watching you make magic. As I gasped in amazement, Philip laughed. All of them have forgotten their true color. That's all. But from now on, it'll be a beautiful flower. That pressed flower has been waiting in the library for about a week, you know. Really? I was using it as a paperweight on top of a on top of a massive dic dictionary, so maybe that's why you didn't notice. I was afraid that if I left it at home, you'd find it, and I didn't want to show it to you till it was finished. Thank you. I'll treasure it dearly. I want you to continue being my number one reader, Jandy. Of course. When I answered that, Philip took me in his arms and held me close. I want you to always be the first one touched by my heart. His sweet voice touched my ears, and I felt so happy that my shoulders started shaking a little. 
While we were walking home, we ran into the king in Orlando on the street. What are you guys doing? How come you hadn't come back home yet? The king was carrying a lot of colorful packages in each hand. Was the parade any good? Yeah, I just thought about this today, but I think we should have a parade every day. What are you saying? The beauty of parades is that they only happen once in a while. If everyone is as, was as excited as my king every day, then they would all be exhausted. Oh, did you just notice my greatness right now? No, no, I'm just saying that idiots of your caliber are very hard to find. I think you're very well aware of that. What did you say? <laughs> the agitated king dropped some of his packages on the ground. Uh, hey, be careful now. If you're not, all those limited Halloween edition snacks will be ruined. Orlando pick up, picked up the packages that the king had dropped. Oh, this is the ghost marshmallow box. It's a good thing that it wasn't the cake. Oh yeah, we got cake! The king suddenly extended one of his packages towards us. Here you go! Uh huh? You're really giving it to us? It's a present. I got you guys into quite a bit of trouble recently. So I just wanted to make it up to you. Thank you so much! Well, well, my king. It seems you're more, much more thoughtful than usual. Ah, uh, one would think that. But, the truth is that I was the one to advise him to buy some of your troubles. Orlando! You talk too much! The king stomped his feet in anger. I was thinking of buying those gifts for them even before you said anything, you idiot! Is that right? Orlando turned towards Philip and me. The king told me everything that happened. I'm truly sorry that this idiot of a king made you go through such an inconvenience. You can torture the king as much as you like until you feel all better, you know? What? I'll look the other way and pretend it's not even happening. So you have no one to worry. So you have no need to worry. If anything, I'd be glad to be of assistance. You heartless jerk! But neither Jandy nor I are mad at the king. I'm sure the king had no idea that things would turn out like that. And not everything was bad either. And the Halloween party they had in Las Caprica was really lovely too. I wanted to go to that Halloween party! <laughs> Thank you so much for the cake, my king. Philip and I will have a bite as soon as we get home. But the cake is not just any ordinary cake, you know. It's a special Halloween cake. It's a special cake available only during Halloween. Please stop talking like you expect gratitude in return. Well, I can't wait to try the special cake! Philip and I parted ways from the game and walked merrily towards our place. As soon as we got home, Philip and I took the cake out of its box. The cake was orange which, with a jack o' lantern design adorning it. Its surface was glossy and it gave off a faintly sweet aroma. It's almost sad to cut it with a knife. Don't say that, let's dig in already. I brought a knife from the kitchen with intentions of cutting the, cu the pumpkin-shaped cake. Huh? What's wrong? The knife's not cutting very well. The next thing I knew, the cake began moving on its own. What's happening? From within the cake came flying out little round ghosts, one after another. Happy Halloween! The little ghosts shrink that with a voice. Now the little ghosts shrieked that with a voice that sounded like a small ringing bell. Tonight is Halloween! Halloween is fun! Trick or treat! This is scary. I'm pretty sure they are threatening us. Philip shrugged his shoulders like he was joking. Should we give these cute little ghosts? some sweets? If you're looking for sweets, here's some. I cut up the cake, I cut up the pumpkin cake and divided it, giving each little ghost a piece. The ghosts were thrilled and began eating it immediately. He was right when he said this cake was special. Philip watched the little ghost with a cute smile on his face. In a good mood after eating the cake, the little ghosts began to float and sway around in their own peculiar way. Are they dancing? While doing that, the little ghosts joined their voices together and began to sing. 
Happy Halloween! La 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 la. Halloween! Halloween! <laughs> the cute little voices melted our hearts. This year's Halloween has been the best one ever. Yeah. While listening to the little ghost's happy Halloween song, we ate our cake with lots of joy in our hearts. <sighs> that was nice. I forgot that it was 20 minutes long. Wow. I would have thought that it would have been 18 at the most. Well, I was definitely wrong. I am Jandy the Artsy Rose, and I was happy. I am happy to entertain you. Now that this is over, I am going to announce, uh, hold on. Well, okay, I had a, I had made a poll where you, where my viewers were supposed to be uh, choosing uh, which ending to get. One person told me that they would leave the choice up to me, and I have decided I'm going to get the dark ending again, so I can see what happens when you choose Orlando. And then I'm going to end my, my Philip run with the mystical ending, because... I do not want to end, I do not want to stop my Philip run with a, with a sad ending. I want to, if I'm going to end it, if I'm going to stop playing it, I want to end it on something good. I am Jandy the Artsy Rose and I will, I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.